video is sponsored by Pixel Games UK. Visit www.pixel-games.co.uk, home of game comparisons, gaming news and everything retro game related. This is Danny through Paisley Eyes. Thank you very much for joining us today. Welcome back to another educational piece. Today I am joined by the very fabulous Danielle McDermott. Danielle, how are you, kid? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for asking me to come on. Uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. And can I just say thanks very much for appearing so glam on a Sunday morning when I'm looking absolutely <laughs> shocking. Nothing but a good Turkish barber. I don't always look like this, you know. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm praying for the barbers to open again. And yeah, I love yeah. the silver though, Dan. Love hey, it. Yeah, <laughs> 50 shades of grey right here, kid. 50 <laughs> so, Dan, you've come on today. Um, I've been doing a little bit of a series where I've been chatting um, to, to some amazing, amazing people um, about topics that can be very, very sensitive, can be very, very close to home, um, mm. just so that we can all get a better understanding of what goes on in the world, but ultimately what the end game is and how it how it plays out and um, we're going to have a chat to you today about your life so far um, and and your little experiences along the way so just so that everybody watching this can get a better understanding of who who Dan is um, and yeah. by the way kid tell us about you uh, well um, I'm a mum to an eight-year-old I've got a large family twin sister two brothers uh, we're all very close I uh, work for the NHS as patient engagement. Um, yeah, that's a uh, parent, parent governor at my daughter's school. I've, I've been quite busy, really, and uh, now yeah. an author. <laughs> yeah, which we'll, an come, author. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, first of all, on behalf <laughs> of the nation, thank you to you and all your amazing colleagues for everything that you've been doing during COVID-19, the RNHS. I don't care what anybody says. They are the best in the world. It goes without saying. Oh, thank you. I can't take credit because I am shielding at the moment. So I have not been working through that process, but they are a fantastic all and especially, yeah, they've all been amazing. And it's everything that they've seen. Yeah, it doesn't matter, mate. This you know, time. You're part of the process leading up to it. You'll be part of the process again after it, you know what I mean? We, it's, it's a team effort. So we do. We love you and your colleagues very much and we're very grateful <laughs> for what you do. Before we come on to the book... The book's got to have a bit of a story, a bit of a background to it, because it's not a fictional novel that you've written. You've actually written about your life. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about the contents of the book, uh, the backstory to it, and why people should go out and buy it, go out and download it when it comes out for release in September. Tell us all about it. So um, I'm going to go straight into why I've written the book. So I was diagnosed with breast cancer in November 2018. And the moment I was diagnosed, I said, I'm going to write a book. And I've always stuck with that goal uh, because I knew it was going to help a lot of other people. Being, you know, 35, I was so young at being diagnosed and being around, you know, um, the chemotherapy center, even just going to the clinics, they were, the women were a lot older. There was never anyone younger um, to a certain part of that journey. So that's why I got uh, writing the book. But it's a lot about my life growing up and, um, you know, struggles I faced through depression as well. Um, and it's around mindset as well. I want to put that in because I always believe whatever you put in your mind, you're putting in your body. And I was highly stressed before I got cancer. So that's the reasons I wanted to write it as well, because stress doesn't save any of us well. I was also um, awarded Employee of the Year. Uh, that was through setting up a relaxation room for the stroke patients um, in Aintree Hospital. Um, my uncle Terry, who you know, <laughs> Terry Wagtermott, um, yeah, uh, officially opened the room with David Johnson. So it, there's a lot of good, there's a good story to it, and it falls into um, why I got cancer. I, I believe why I got cancer. Okay. And you mentioned there about Uncle Terry opening the room with David Johnson. Is that David Johnson, the former Liverpool player as well? Yes. Wow, great company, great Aren't company. I lucky? Aren't you lucky? Aren't you lucky? <laughs> so, okay, Dan, so, you know, we're coming up to, to two years this November since mm. diagnosis. How did you 
first think or what made you first think something was wrong just so we can give everybody an idea um, okay this is quite a, a good one because I had a premonition I had breast cancer so I was there uh, listening to music in bed one morning it was earlier on in the year of 2018 and as I closed my eyes something was sitting um, I had sorry I had a vision of me walking up the corridor in work but I had no hair a bandana on and a long beige coat with a big pair of stilettos. I remember it so vividly. I'd had breast cancer, but I was going to be fine. So automatically, I was looking towards the left breast, and I was like, something's not right there, and I kept looking around the, around the nipple area. Anyway, it come to October of 2018. I've been unwell over the, you know, the coming months, you know, little cold here and there, feeling really fatigued, but again, I was putting a lot of pressure on myself through courses I was doing at the time. I was training as a counsellor. These were my diploma level and uh, my business administration. So then it come to the end of October and I'd had a really bad chest infection, which I never get, by the way. And um, I, I was on antibiotics and I was in bed and something was telling me, Danielle, check your breast. And as I've checked my breast, I felt the lump. And I, and I went, oh my God, there's a lump there. But I fell back asleep and I didn't really register it when I woke up. So then I won it. we had the awards night on the f November the 2nd and that Sunday I'd gotten out the shower and uh, started putting my cream on and something was saying again, check your breast, checked it, never looked at the right, always looked at the left and then it was the lump and that's when I found that lump. And was, was, the, was the lump located near the nipple area? Was it on the yeah. areola or was it underneath or right? It was by, quite, by, quite close to the areola. Right, okay. Yeah, because I had it, I was diagnosed with invasive ductal carcinoma, which comes from the milk ducts. Wow. But it's funny enough because on the awards night, um, I kept saying to my friend and my twin sister, I was going, it's not right here, you know, it's, it's this area. And they went, Danielle, you've had a chest infection, you're still on antibiotics. I went, it's not that, something's here. I just knew. I'm really intuitive with my body, you see. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so you've woke up. You've checked yourself out again. Um, by the way, for the benefit of any fellas watching this as well, absolutely, men's the same. Check your testes, lads. It's massively important. There's no shame in it at all. Um, and for the girls watching this, of course, take notes. Obviously, you know, check yourselves out. Um, when, you found your, when you found your lump, Dan, and you've kind of bypassed what your sister and your pals have said to you, you're no, you're, you've then got it welded and cemented into your head. Do you know what? There is a problem here. Where do yeah. you go next? What do you do? What's the best course of action? Well, I phone my mum first. Always <laughs> works always best. Girl, always yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. Mums are great. Um, yeah. Well, my mum's the breast secretary, believe it or not. Wow. So, uh, yeah. So I uh, called the GP the next on the Monday morning and I was seen that evening. And I was in the breast clinic on the Tuesday morning. And that's when I was diagnosed four days later me, uh, from me award. You've gone, you've gone from employee of the year, and I'm assuming a few glasses of Prosecco and a bit of a <laughs> No, I didn't drink, you know, uh, because you know? of the chest infection. Now I drove. I was still feeling pretty, pretty rank. Um, well, in that case, this is a continuously crap time then, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll say I'm a bit of a functional alcoholic at the moment. So <laughs> Okay, so you've gone in, you've been diagnosed four days later um, and gone from the euphoria of being employee of the, of the year for our fabulous, fabulous NHS to being someone who really, really needs our fabulous NHS. What happens then from, from point of diagnosis? What do they recommend then? Uh, well, I, you have to have your scan. So first of all, I had an ultrasound scan. So it's like when you when you're pregnant and they do, you know, you do the ultrasound there to check the baby. It's the same way, checking the breast and underneath the arm. And um, then I had mammogram. Well, I had two mammograms because there was calcification, which is I think the milk deposits. So I'd have to read up on it uh, underneath the breast as well. So we wanted to see if they disappeared second time round, pressing harder. Um, then I had to have an ultrasound guided biopsy where they take uh, five samples of tissue from your breast so they can be sent off for an, uh, for an analysis and then you have to wait two weeks for those results to come back and that had to be the worst two weeks of my life because although the axilla looked clear on the ultrasound it didn't mean I didn't have cancer in the lymph nodes so you know and I didn't understand all this at that time 
you know, it was all very new. I still carried on going to work. Um, whether I'd done much was a, a different story, but I, you know, I needed to just sort of keep a focus in my mind at that time, uh, feeling very frightened. You know, I've got, I've got my daughter there, you, you know, I'm looking at her thinking, oh my God, am I going to be here for you? Um, so yeah, that, that two weeks was just the worst part of it really. And then, um, I had to go back to clinic to see the surgeon at this point. Um, and he told me I ha had two different type of cancers within the breast. So I had invasive ductal and something called mucinous, which is a rare form of it that comes with, sometimes comes with, um, invasive ductal, estrogen fed. Uh, and I was a grade two, but luckily for me and my intuition, I caught mine at stage one, got a very early stages. Okay, so, um, can, you, can you just sort of tell us, because I don't know, what's the difference between grade one, grade <clears> two, grade three? Is it like a table or is there? Well, yeah, you've got your grade one, which is slow growing. Okay. Um, you've got your grade two, which is intermediate. And then your grade three, which is fast. Uh, the cells are growing really fast. Nice. Um, then you've got your stages. So your stage one, which is very early stage, your stage two. Um, stage three and stage four, but stage four is if it's spread out of the breast into other areas of the body. Okay. Okay. So you've then gone back to see the surgeon, had the chat with the surgeon. I'm assuming they've given you a full breakdown of, of, of what's happening to you, what they believe is the best course of treatment and what happens next. If you don't mind us asking, Dan, would you, would you share that with us and, and sort of tell us? Where, yeah. yeah, I was already aware I had, uh, I was going to have a mastectomy on that, on the uh, Tuesday morning, me breast nurse Donna said a mastectomy, you know, that's needed. So I went, that's fine. Take it off. And a, a mastectomy is but breast when I saw, sorry, sorry, breast Dan, removal. Breast yeah. removal. Yeah. Thank you. Breast removal. Yeah. Um, but when I saw Lee, you know, he's talking through the biopsy results and I held on to him. That was me surgeon. Sorry. I went, Lee, I'm really scared of you. You know, I don't want to die. And he went, well, hopefully your cancer won't have come back in five years. So that shock hit you and you think, oh my God, there's a chance this could come back in five years. Um, he said, you know, you're going to need a mastectomy. When do you want your surgery? And I went, when can you do it? And I had mine done really quickly, to be honest. Um, so I was from oh, about two weeks, yeah, three, the third week, that's when I was having the breasts completely removed. So you didn't have a lot of time to process it all because yeah. you're still in shock, aren't you really? Um, and even you, luckily for me, my mum's sister had, my auntie Karen had breast cancer and she had a mastectomy, but my uncle Terry's wife, Carol, also had breast cancer at the same time as her. And she had chemotherapy first because everyone's journey is different. So I had them two to talk to, although at this point I didn't know if I was going to benefit from chemotherapy. That wasn't, they said there's a possibility because of your age. So I was like, right, okay. That, and the fear for me was losing my hair, like for any woman. I didn't really worry about the breast at this point, uh, but I was prepared that I would wake up with something there. It depends on your breast size as well, to be fair. You know, I'm lucky I don't have large breasts. If you have large breasts over a D-cup, then when you have a mastectomy, you've, yeah. you, they take it from different parts of your body. So your tummy, your, back, your bum or your back, that's uh, how they build the breast up that way. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. So I had something called an expander in and they fill that up every uh, week with saline to stretch your skin. That makes a uh, way for the implant then when that's ready to, to go in basically. Um, yeah. So that, but yeah, so that was, that was that really. Incredible. Now <clears throat> you've woken up post-surgery Yeah. with one boob, well, sorry, one breast to keep this, uh, Keep this correct, my apologies. So you've woken up post-surgery with one breast. As a woman, I mean, obviously you mentioned before about your hair and I get that because that's something that everybody sees and, you know, it's, it's a woman's pride and joy, isn't it, to look glam? Particularly yeah. today, you girls, you invest a lot of time in making yourselves look boss and we, us heterosexual fellas, and I'm sure all the gay women out there absolutely appreciate it. So, <laughs> um, but with regards to the breast and, and waking up and only having one, when you've yeah. had two for such a long time, how did that affect you mentally? Did it, did it? Do you know what? I'll be honest. It didn't affect me at that point. I was, I was like, Oh, well, I hope there's something still there. Okay. It wasn't the same size. Um, and I knew in my head, I assumed I was going to have an implant in the right breast. So I was thinking, well, I'll have a new set of dollies, you know? So uh, that's how I looked at it. So I was coping. Okay. At this point, 
Um, again, I don't think I really processed what had been what had happened because it was all quick, quick, quick from yeah. finding the lump. Um, it was only until I was having the completion of reconstruction, and I remember um, going into see Lee again after my chemotherapy, and I said to him, "You know, so what are you doing with this boob?" And he was, and he was like, "Nothing." I said, "Why?" And he went, "Well, let's just see how the left falls first. He said, "That's a you know perfect breast." He said, <laughs> "I was like, I know, <laughs> 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 I know, but you've took the other one away. So what are you gonna do?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, um, he, he went, we're just concentrating on your left at the moment. So I was like, right, okay. And it was only then walking out of that clinic, it really hit home. And I thought, oh my God, what am I going to look like? And I was 36 at this point, 36 years of age, one, one normal breast and one fake breast. And that's how I looked at it. And I was devastated. I went home to me, to, um, I was on the phone to my twin sister on FaceTime. <laughs> and I had my boots out. Hayley, what am I going to look like? I was devastated by this point it was <laughs> awful um and it was only because I, I could I didn't have any pictures to look at you know of other women who've gone through the process right and that was that was a big thing for me so if you could see it and visualize what you know what the outcome of the surgery is going to be like you probably settle a lot more mm -hmm. and um because I didn't have that I couldn't I couldn't picture it and you know yeah, and, and that, 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 that was it for me. It was just so distressing at that point. Okay, so let's fast forward a little bit. You, you, at that particular point in time, you're feeling really, really delicate, really, really sensitive. You can't imagine what your, your, your breasts are going to look like when it's been done. You then follow whatever procedure Lee tells you to, and you end up back on the, um, on the operating theatre again while they do the reconstruction. I'm assuming, Dan, that when reconstruction's done, you're all sort of padded out and protected and wrapped up in bubble wrap and stuff, are you, in a particular way? For the no. Time? No? No, no. No support there for it to sit sort of in a particular way? or No, no. It was just um, I had. So from the mastectomy, I just, I've got a big scar across this part of me but, uh, there because obviously the nipple area is gone now. So that's a big scar there. And then I have a scar underneath this breast. Okay. Uh, so I've got two scars. And they're the, the healing pretty well, to be fair. Mm -hmm. um, so the implants they just put that but it depend, again it depends on your breast size I think I don't know about the larger breast I'm going to have to find that out now um, it was just again say, you know the stitches and some surgical paper underneath so there was nothing I wasn't what? tied up because I assumed that I'd have something right yeah. around you know like a big bandage around the chest area I didn't I thought no. you would have been coming out like an Egyptian mummy or something <laughs> <laughs> what about bruising Dan was the bruising there and not an awful lot, you know. Okay. No, it was pain, but the, to be fair, the um, reconstruction was a lot more painful, the, the completion of that, than what the mastectomy was. Removal, because it's, yeah. And I'd had two lymph nodes removed here from underneath the arm, the sentinel nodes. Uh, but it was the reconstruction that I, that, that I suffered more with pain. Bless I woke you. up crying, actually. Mm. Oh. And then when you've... You've calmed down from the from the the anaesthetics and the drugs that you've been in and stuff like that, and you've had the chance to see yourself stark. As what was what was your initial thought when you saw your breasts? Oh God, doesn't that look good? It's not bad, that is it? Honest to God, I found my mum. Facetime my mum. Go, mum. You put every moment all that like. Don't want to see your boobs anymore. <laughs> I was like, no, but doesn't that look, boss? <laughs> <laughs> How I great do I look? <laughs> so, uh, to be fair, I didn't... Uh, was that, sorry, uh, you are referring to the reconstruction completion, aren't you? I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was absolutely over the moon with the outcome. I was yeah. over the moon with it. So, so uh, yeah. Lee's a good guy then, done a great job. Brilliant. Honest to God. And I, you know, we'll, we'll go on to the book. They, they will be getting shared in the book. Brilliant. And if you ever get to watch this, Lee, well done, mate, because you've clearly put a smile on this girl's face. So. <laughs> I, went, I remember when I went back to work and I seen Lee and I gave him a big hug and uh, I went, Lee, <laughs> this is me crying. And I went, you know what? I put a bikini on, I went the bats. And you know oh, what? Yeah. I couldn't get me words out and he went, you couldn't tell. I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> and he it's... gave me a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> once again, once again, Dan, I think this just reiterates the point that I made earlier on, RNHS. 
they're the best aren't oh, they no, they really no. are obviously no. we, don't, we don't always get everything right and it's the same in every single job uh, that's you know everything I mean? isn't it but yeah i you know those staff are absolutely incredible and you know i've got a lot of friends and probably half the hospital or maybe more than that are uh, my friends anyway so i've been i'm, I'm fortunate though to be fair with, with all of them i've got so much support in there that I, you know I'm, i am very very lucky bless you great so it's what today it's the 28th of june today we're going to fast forward to september because in september this year um as dan's previously mentioned earlier on the book is coming the book has by far and none the greatest title <laughs> and you can imagine now can't you i mean we've been chatting to dan here for the best part of 20 minutes half an hour you can imagine can't you she's not just going to call it Danielle, my story, or something really, really <laughs> boring like that. Dan, tell us what's the name of the book. Bald, brave, and bloody beautiful. <laughs> Bald, brave, and bloody beautiful. Do you know what? Interesting story for you guys watching this. I first reached out to Dan and made contact with her via social media, and it was after a post that uh, someone I knew had shared or, or, or had liked or whatever, and it was a picture of, of Dan, bald, and I've got to say, you did look I great rock. without your hair, didn't you? <laughs> I rocked it, didn't I? <laughs> really, really I rocked did, it yeah. for a bit, Dan. I rocked it for a bit because um, obviously once I, you know, I had chemotherapy and once that treatment had finished, I did look like Grant Mitchell. My younger brother done nothing but take the mickey out of me, you know. He used to go, here she is, Grant Mitchell. Grant and I've, Mitchell. Got an, <laughs> I've got an older brother, Gary. And uh, he's got a shaved head. So when if we'd walk in the house and my mum and dad's together, our Craig, we're like, <laughs> here they are. The, the Mitchell brothers. brothers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gra Gravison and Carsley have got called as well. <laughs> you'll, you'll never be as ugly as Gravison and Carsley. For the benefit of those who don't know who they are, they were former Everton players and they weren't that good neither. Um, so let's let's go back to September in the book. The book comes out. Yeah. It's going to be available on ebooks, audio book. Um, you're going to be able to download it. There's going to be hard copies as well in paperback form. Um, we'll put some notes in the description for Dan's links later so that you can get in touch with her if you want to have a read of it. Give us a quick overview, Dan, of, of what's in the book. If you had to sum it up in, say, oh God. You know, a couple of words, what would you say? Um, positivity. It's all around mindset and positivity with the book. Um, you know overcoming of first times uh talks a little bit about my mum and dad both um going through uh, cancer themselves sorry my mum had cervical cancer my dad had prostate cancer you know i've come from a really strong family background so that's what it's talking about in it i will be sharing my surgery outcome i'll be sharing my before i lost my hair to when i lost my hair to my wigs so that's the book you know it's being being it's being brave and just yeah just for the world to see Brilliant. that's what it, that's what it is so it's got a real real positive message. that was more than a couple of words that was oh it's sorry. great it's great it doesn't <laughs> matter it doesn't matter it probably if we were to shoot this again this is why once again i only do one take videos but probably if we were to shoot this again i'd have probably said give me an overview a summary or something like that but my words failed me dan it's sunday liverpool have recently won the league so i'm, I'm still trying to <laughs> deal with the whiskey um but this this is fantastic. I mean, this has been a great, great, great listen for me because I've learned so much and you've given us, and I want to thank you for that, Dan. You've given us a real insight into, into who you are and what you've been through. And Thank and you. What a brilliant outcome. And then if being a mum to a fabulous bambino wasn't enough and having an uncle who's a former hero of mine wasn't enough and working <laughs> for our NHS, who were all heroes, in my opinion, wasn't enough, you're actually training at the moment, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about that and what the end game is with that. So all through my chemotherapy treatment, my twin sister said to me when I first started the treatment, obviously, you know, when the hair goes and stuff, she was saying, watch SAS, who dares wins? She went, you will love it. And I just couldn't get my head into it at this point. I was like, hey, I can't be bothered. So anyway, yeah, I thought, no, do you know what? I'm going to put it on. And I watched it and I thought, I'm going on that show. Uh, that's what I'm that's my goal another one of my goals so uh, yeah that's what I'm training for I say yes there's wins and the producers have been in touch so I'm just um working towards the fitness requirements at the minute obviously through the, the chemotherapy treatments me my body's not the same 
um, and I'm on tamoxifen, which is an, uh, puts a coat around the estrogen cells. So I've, I've got achy bones as well. So it's a lot harder for me at the moment in training, which is not an excuse because I'll do it. I'm very determined. I'm very okay. focused. Yeah. If I have my mind on something, I'm going to do it. And it is, again, what you're putting in your mind, you're putting out there as well to the universe. Oh, so, uh, yeah, so that's what I'm training about. It's going well, though. It's going well. See, I get to deal with the stars before they even become stars. This is absolutely fantastic. Well, the book's <laughs> going to be a bestseller, isn't it, Dan? Uh, do you know what? I'm And I'm hoping I'm going to get a signed copy of it because... You will get a signed copy. <laughs> even, even as a fella, and, the, you know... I've had a few ladies on my channel recently talking to me about various different topics and subjects, and that's going to continue. And we're going to bring some more fellas in there as well. We, we like to have a nice balance, but it's great for us fellas because we get to learn stuff. Dan, do you know what I mean? We, you know, there's there's so much more outside of rock and roll music, football clubs, and loving your family and stuff like that. You, you know, and uh, and yet you've given us such a great insight into what could be arguably the scariest thing that you're ever going to go through in your life and how you've managed to turn it upside down and turn it into this wonderful positive experience and 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 be able to share your story with such passion you're a credit kid honestly it's been a joy to listen thank to you it. do you know <laughs> what i had um I believe I went through the cancer to write a book to help others. That that's what I believe and that's how I look at it. I don't even I don't even worry about the cancer now. I go, Well I've had it, it's not coming back. Because that's what I'm putting in my mind. It's not. I'm you know, I've had an excellent prognosis. So you've got to take that, you've got to ride with it. There's no point in sitting there. And to be fair, for the first nine months I did dwell on it. I was absolutely petrified. But now I think, well, I've had it. My life's changing for the better, so just watch this space because <laughs> I'm going to be a star, darling. <laughs> look, look out, world! Here I come. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, just, just, yeah. I just, want to, I want to close on this. I want to ask you this. Okay. If there's a young lady watching this video right now, mm -hmm. or a young gentleman watching this video right now, and they find a lump, what's, what would you say to them? Go and get it checked. You know, I, I um, held a Breast Cancer Awareness Day um, when I went back to work with the breast team. And the amount of people I spoke to, I said, what would you do if you found the lump? They went, oh, but too scared. I couldn't go to the doctors. Well, if that's cancer, that's only going to grow and will kill you. So just go out there, go to the GP. Face, have the fear and face it anyway. That's what I always say. And uh, because if you get it early enough, you've got a, such a, a better prognosis. There you go, guys. You've heard that firsthand. Let's break that stigma. Yes, it might be a little bit embarrassing for you. Yes, there might be a bit of fear inside you. But ultimately, as brutal as this sounds, this can save your life. This makes sure that you get to see tomorrow. You've heard it firsthand here from a lady who's been through it. Go and see the quack and get sorted. The doctors and get sorted. House <laughs> in me coming out. Sorry. Go and see the doctors and, and get sorted immediately. <laughs> Apologies, my apologies. Dan, we're going to put your um, your links for your social media down in the comments below. Um, Thank you. I've got a feeling that there's going to be people out there who are going to want to talk to you. They're going to love your story. They're going to, you know, want to want to sit on the back of it and and, and hear a little bit more about it. And I, I really recommend you do buy the book when it comes out in September. Once again, it's called Bald, Brave and bloody beautiful <laughs> um it's due to come out in september with the publishers at the moment having its final uh, there's a yeah there's a there's about 12 chapters with the publisher at the moment so i'm just editing some more of the chapters making a few changes um and yeah yeah it'll all be there it'll be out by september though no problem fantastic well listen dan this has been a wonderful wonderful interview thank you so much for joining us today guys please do feel free to subscribe to the channel like ding the notification bell so that you can catch up on our other fantastic guests that we're going to be having. Once again, I specialize in everything and know absolutely nothing about anything, but I love being with these people. This has been Danielle McDermott. This is through Paisley Eyes. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.